On the first couple of scenes, it was a bit slow and then it picked up right off the bat with a lot of magic, a lot of protection spells, a boss fight. And it, I immediately thought about Doctor Strange with the teleportation spells and the magic circles. And I really digged it. I was like really enthralled by all of these spells and all of these graphics and, and CGI. It was just really spectacular. So I was like, mm, this might be something I really get to enjoy. So I just sat down and went through it. What made me stay was actually the production, the dresses, the gowns, the accessories, the weapons, the magic. It was really a full on production. If you see the masters, there are four masters. They were color coordinated with blacks and then whites. And it was like the two of them have different magics. And then this one, Boya was like a sword fighter, a sword master. It was really exciting to see a very rich and very colorful production. And they really thought into making it more shine for each and every character. It's just really fantastic. It was really great. Uh, Never mind the story. If you don't really focus much on the story and if you just sit there and watch all the graphics happen and all the fights and all the CGI, it's really, really entertaining. Let's talk about the main character of the story, Master King Ming. At the first couple of scenes, we were introduced that King Ming is actually a really good master. He can do a lot of spells, but the problem is he can't do one spell, which is the protection spell, which is meant to protect people. And he doesn't really have someone to protect. Therefore, he falls back into teleportation spells. I get that. I get that he has a, a an issue to protect someone, but I wasn't really feeling his acting, his scenes. I wasn't really drawn to the character. I don't know why, it might be something subjective, but I wasn't really feeling his plight. Maybe it's the way the execution of the scenes were, or it was just really kind of not really into the scenes. Like there weren't particular stories or scenes in the movie that made me feel moved. I was really mostly told about what his plight was. It never was explained or showed to me properly so that I could actually, you know, feel kind of something for the character. He is the product of a fox demon, allegedly. So he was, he was telling that story at the first couple of times in the movie and then he shared it to Boya, but I wasn't really showed it. You know, there weren't scenes for me to see a kid being teased because he is the son of a fox demon. It's just, it wasn't showed to me. So I was feeling a little left behind and I wasn't really feeling affection or empathic towards the character, which is a little bit dull because he is the main character and I'm supposed to feel for him, but I don't really, it's just a disconnect between him and me. And as the viewer, I'm not really entertained by that. I was more <laughs> entertained about the graphic and his magic, not the character itself. So yeah. Between King Ming and his summon Killing Stone, there was something going on over there that I wasn't quite sure what to think about. It was kind of beyond the summoner and summon relationship that I thought that maybe King Ming has more affection towards his summon, which is Killing Stone. I don't really get that part. Boya is the master swordsman. He's one of the four masters in the movie and he is okay. The character itself didn't really have enough scenes where he is dramatic. I didn't really see any scenes about his plight, his issues, and I wasn't really affectionate. I was told about his plight. He was explaining it, but I was never really shown what it was. So I didn't really feel connected with the character. But the only thing that I really liked about the character was his awesome fights. His scenes was really, really great. He was flying around. He had swords flinging around, flute. It was a flute playing. It was just really crazy. It was really crazy good. I like his fighting scenes, but the character itself felt a little bit short. If any other actor would play that role, I would probably feel the same. 
because there wasn't really any range for any character to go through because it was very limited. It was geared towards more action scenes rather than being themselves or being a different character, or being a really sad person that was really thrown around by demons. He didn't really have any scenes that portray that. So if it, it was any other character, it would just feel the same. But again, the action was great. A thing that I didn't really understand as well was the relationship between King Ming and Boya. Before it was King Ming and Killing Stone, the summon. Now it's King Ming and Boya. Towards the whole film, you would see, if you really re read the lines, read between the lines and look a little closer, you would see that their dynamics isn't just out of friendship or being best friends. There was a lot of banter between the two of them, a lot of fight scenes, a lot of negativity, a lot of positivity. It's just a lot of push and pull that feels more than just regular friendship. I don't know if they were in a relationship after or the film is inkling to a relationship, but it certainly felt that way. If you just read between the lines of how they are together and how their dynamics are, how they save each other even, how they talk, it just feels like someone in a relationship who has been in a relationship for a long time that is more than just friends. And I don't know why they didn't just say that out loud because it was really highly suggested, but I guess they just didn't. And I got it if it was like a hidden message or a hidden trope that maybe they are going out maybe in the next movie or something or in the book. If this was based on a book, I did not research this. Apologies. But yeah, I got it. So these two may have been in a relationship and I wish they just said that and not hide it. On the first scene of the movie, Wang Do appeared as the master of Master King Ming. He's actually the first and foremost master before he passed the title towards King Ming. I get that. And then a couple of scenes later, he is the high priest of the Empress. And then a couple of scenes later that, he is actually the master. So this character is actually very confusing. I didn't understand how he can be the someone and then he's actually the real person. And then, I don't know. It was really very hard to follow the narrative of how it was delivered. Or I don't know if the writing explicitly stated how he came to be because it was just kind of hard to follow what this character storyline is. So I don't know whether I should be affectionate toward the summon or because he's actually the master or when he became like, the snake, spoiler alert, it's just really confusing. I don't really follow the storyline of this character properly. Also, I was confused because maybe his makeup was really great. I didn't really understand or I didn't really get that the guy at the first scene was actually the same actor in the scenes after. I just didn't get that. It was way past over my head, so yeah. It was kind of confusing. The details were kind of all over the place. I give this a rating of three out of five. The special effects, the graphics, the environment, the people, the, the clothes, the production, everything about that, everything about those details were really excellent. The action scenes, the, the other stuff, the demons, the magic, it's just, really really great hands down really awesome special effects really good what i didn't really like about yin and yang master were the details of the story i didn't know if people were actually dead or not towards killing stone when he was turned into a summon i don't know if he's dead because he's basically a spirit guardian so are spirit guardians just spirits or are they actual physical humans or demons in the physical realm? They never really said any detail about that or explained it. He was just whisked off to become a spirit guardian and I don't know if he's actually dead or he's just a soul. Really confusing. And then we go to Boya. Boya also became a spirit guardian and then he was alive again. So I don't know 
what the characteristics, what the requirements are for being a spirit guardian. Are they actually dead or are they actually not spirits and just guardians and just spirits as titles? I don't understand. They didn't really explain that. So it kind of is hard to follow the movie because you're thinking like as a viewer that he's dead, right? He's just a spirit and now he's guarding the summoner and then that's it. And then he's alive again. So does that mean Killing Stone is alive again? Or yeah, because Boya became a human afterwards. So can any person become a spirit guardian just like that? Because he kind of sacrificed himself at those scenes where he was bleeding and then he became a spirit guardian and then he came alive. Confusing. Let me know if you know what the backstory is. Comment down below because it's actually very confusing. Because of the action scenes, the special effects, the magic, the many magic, and then the detail of the environment, the costumes, the production, all of those fine details of making up the whole movie. It was great. Because of them, the story, the characters, their motivators were actually shoved to the side. They weren't really given much thought because there were a lot of things going on. And I get that. If you're probably someone who's stressed about work and you don't really want to think and just want to watch, and this is something really good for that because you don't really clearly see what's going on and you just want to escape all of these special effects like on your face stuff. It's really good. But then if you're really into the movie and you want to understand, if you want to get the characters feel something, feel a very something like heartbroken or really sad about the characters, you don't really get to see that because you don't understand. You don't get who they are because you're like bombarded with all these special effects on your face and you don't really see the plight of the characters. You don't feel sorry. You don't root for them. It's just they don't really connect with you and yeah so that's something that's really bothering me about eating young master although i really love the special effects i wanted to love the story but i couldn't really understand the story there were even like characters that don't really fit into the movie like the hair demon like somewhere down the line she explains that she was heartbroken by a man and I don't really feel affection for the hair demon because she's a demon. For the first couple of scenes, I see her hair wrapping around other people and killing them. And now I feel, I'm supposed to feel sorry that the fact that he was left by a man or something, it was just really like, really random. Like, oh my God, am I supposed to feel sorry for a hair demon? Ew, no, yeah. If you are after something with a lot of magic, a lot of special effects, fantasy if you're in the mood for that definitely give this a watch it's over two hours long there's a bit of shortage with drama and how the characters are so you don't really feel that much for them but the special effects and action scenes more than make up for the movie it was really entertaining so definitely definitely give this a watch. If you found this video helpful and enjoyable, do give me a like. If you want to see more reviews on Asian drama TV series and films in the future, definitely subscribe and hit that bell button. I leave you with my favorite scene, which is the painter summoner spirit guardian thingy. He actually has a paintbrush and he makes like portraits of shields. It was kind of cool for me because I don't really see that much in super powered films, movies, and comics. It's just something different, like portraits of S.H.I.E.L.D. It, it was definitely a good surprise. That's it.